How do we learn to trust? You know, I've been dealing with people with trust issues for a long time, whether it's in the personal life or the professional life. And really, there's a word that goes on the end of this sentence. It's how do we learn to trust again? Most of us were born trusting, trusting, you know, somebody would be there to take care of us and she'd love us and keep us alive and all that. And then something got broken later. There's always an again to this. It might have been that you learned to not trust in an early age, or you might have had a horrible relational breakup in your adult years that you learned, okay, that's not going to work. But it's, there's an again to it. What is trust? Trust is when we allow someone to know our vulnerabilities. Let me say that again. It's when we allow someone to know our vulnerabilities, our uh, soft spots, our failures, our, our pain, our negatives, our weaknesses. And when you allow someone to know them, you're saying, I trust you with this information that you're not going to do something hurtful to me. Um, in the Bible, one of the translations for the word in the Hebrew is to be careless. To have so much trust in someone that you're just careless with them. You don't have to edit. You don't have to be walking on eggshells to make sure you say it right. Just to be careless with them because you know they'll treat your vulnerabilities in a kind and respectful manner. All right, let's talk about some of the negative ways that we handle trust. First thing is we don't. We basically become self-sufficient. And what happens then is that um, we get sick. We get sick emotionally. We get sick relationally, spiritually, sometimes financially and career-wise. Because when you can't trust, you can't reach out to other people. The self-sufficient person uh, has major trust issues, and they don't do well in life. The research just says that. So the not trusting is not a good thing. Another thing we do is that we trust people too quickly. That's just the opposite side of the whole pendulum there is that when people let us down or people um, aren't consistent with us or kind with us, we sort of like, okay, forgive and forget and try again without sitting back and thinking, let me discern if you're going to really change your ways here. So trusting too quickly is a problem too. The third thing is moving to what I call the passive permanent position. Passive permanent means I'll never trust again. I'm just going to like wait for people to be kind to me and I'm just going to sit here and judge the world. That's no good either when you're kind of waiting for everybody to be perfect around you. This is a person that when, when they've been hurt in trust issues, when one person lets them down a little bit, it's like, okay, everybody's like that. You can't do that. Let's talk about some healthy ways to handle trust. The first is you've got to reverse the fear-need complex. Now, that's something in our head that says, I'm afraid of needing people, so I won't need them, but then I feel like I need them, and so I'll go back in and I get afraid. And it's back and forth. It's awful. You've really got to let the need trump the fear. It's always going to be scary to trust somebody because nobody's perfect. But you've got to have more need for people than you do fear for people because the fear will eat you up. Another thing to do is you really have to kind of count the cost. What is it costing me not to trust people? Am I lonely? Am I not feeling energy? Am I not succeeding in my business and I'm not handling my parenting chores right? So when we count the cost, we think, gosh, maybe i got to start learning how to trust again. Third thing is stick your toe in the water. Take a small risk with someone, see what happens. Allow someone to see a, a small mistake you made or something you're kind of insecure about or something like that and see how they handle that. And another thing is you've got to have good discernment of the right people in your life. You've got to make sure the people you're with are not going to use that information in bad ways or judge you or, or keep an account or anything like that. Let me give you a couple of homework assignments to kind of fit in with this when you finish this video. The first thing is to write down in your notebook how you're going to put your toe in the water. What is something that you don't like being alone about? You don't like nobody knowing about it because secrets kind of take energy out of our lives. What's one thing you'd love to trust somebody with? A mistake you made, something in your past, something you're embarrassed about? But a toe, not the whole thing because trust issues are, you know, they're big deals. You've got to have a small risk. Second thing is who's the safe person you can talk to that won't use that? Who would, instead of judging you or moving away from you, move towards you and say, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. Thanks for entrusting me with that. Find that person. Write their name down. Write two or three people's names down as you start to do that toe in the water part. Here's another one. I wrote a book called Beyond Boundaries where it talks about after you've had to set limits in a difficult relationship, how do you learn how to trust again? What are the steps that you've got to take, the toe in the water, but what are the steps that the person who who, what have they done? They've been irresponsible. They've let you down. What are the steps that they've got to take? That's a two-way street. That's how we learn to trust again. Again.